you are here on purpose with a purpose by design. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Purpose by Design. And I am Dr. Pamela Hinkle. Thank you for showing up today. As always, you're in for a treat. We have an amazing guest for you today. Someone that I get to call not only friend and somebody that I connect with a lot in business, but someone that I call pastor. Yes, Pastor Donato Ooh. is in the house. <laughs> Woo! Welcome, Pastor D. Yeah, no, thank you, Pamela, for having me here on Purpose with Pamela. So excited to be here. It's uh, been a long time in the making. It has been. and I'm so glad that you're here with us. We are going to have a blast. And it is fun to be able to interview my pastor. So a little quick backstory on this, y'all, is for many, many years, I was the senior pastor at Victory Celebration Church and uh, was the co-pastor with my husband for many, many years before that. But about a year ago, the Lord said it was time to release that mantle to Pastor Donato. And so although I'm still there and um, a cheering section and all of that, I now say, Hello, Pastor D. <laughs> so it is awesome to have my pastor here. And Pastor Donato pastored with us long before he took the lead role. And yep. he's going to share all of the, his story with us today. Oh, geez, but how much time do we have? <laughs> oh, I know. We're just going to have to make it work. It's going to be awesome to hear your story. But first, you have to answer this question. Pastor Donato. If you had a billboard on a highway somewhere, mm -hmm. what would the message that you would want shared say? Oh, you know, there's so much. Um, you know, I guess I would say one of the things, um, and we can probably dig into it a little bit, but, um, you know, don't let the things that happen to you in life get you down. Um, and again, we could probably get into that a little bit more, but yeah, something, something towards that. I love that. Don't let the things in life that happen get you down. Yep. Because there are things that happen. Life happens and sometimes it's really awesome. And sometimes you're like, what? <laughs> Wait a minute, right? Yeah. And so we have to find a purpose within so that we don't let it get us down, which I know it, you're a pro at that and, and you'll be giving us all kinds of gold nuggets on it. So with that, let's jump into a little bit of your backstory, or we like to say testimony. You are now the senior pastor of a growing online community yeah. as well as in-house, right? church, but it hasn't always been that way. You're married. And by the way, your lovely bride's birthday is today. Woo! Woo! Happy birthday, Nicole. One of my favorite people on this backstage. Yes, yeah, she's backstage. Y'all come way better because she can see you. Um, but anyways, it's her birthday and you have a family. And there's just so much. You have a new business that a reestablished business is maybe a way of putting it. Yeah, rebranded. Rebranded. There's a lot going on in your life. So <clears throat> bring us up to date. How in the world did you get here? But um, first, a little bit more about who you are. So tell us a little bit more about who you are and how did you get here? Oh, yeah. So again, how much time we got? <laughs> well, we have about minutes so just yeah, dive in I'm just, I'm just teasing but um you know just like anyone you know there's there's probably a huge backstory and and kind of to what i just said you know don't let life get you down um you know there's there's many things that's happened along the road of life for me right um you know from a child uh, basically having my siblings taken away and, you know, that being kind of devastating to, you know, my mom and dad getting divorced and, um, you know, different things. I broke my leg as a kid. Um, 
you know, all of these things and then growing up and all the heartaches, all the problems that you go through in life, um, you know, all of these things happen and it can be tough while you're going through it, right? <clears throat> there's, there's always been things that, you know, maybe I haven't understood from uh, a certain perspective and then they happen to you and then you're like, oh, now I have a little bit more clarity on that, right? So instead of letting those things get you down, and, and dragging you down. I mean, it, it might end in the, in the current moment, right? But having, you know, God, first of all, to lean on is most important. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that in life, that's that's where those things can get you down. Um, and, and you do have to have a good frame of mind so they don't also. So I always kind of like to say something about, you know, playing the cards that you're dealt. Um, <laughs> not, not that I condone gambling or anything like that, but, you know, in poker, you get to switch in your, your cards, right. And, and, and get new ones. And that's kind of how life is, is that, you know, you get to choose the cards to a degree that you play. Oh. And, you know, that's, that's kind of what I've done in my life. You know, I could, I could have let all of these things that have, you know, happened to me frame who I am and, and be lesser than I am, or I can take those things that have happened to me, learn from them, in a sense, put them behind me. They're still part of who I am, but <clears throat> grow from it, right? Learn from it and, and move on from them and then use them as, you know, like tools in my tool belt that I can now help minister to others with and, and, you know, bring them up um, from, from the pit that they're in. Wow. That's pretty amazing. So you came from some pretty hard beginnings, oh, yeah. family splitting in numerous ways. And how, how did it come about that you would, consider pastoring. I mean, where did that ever come from? I mean, you're talking about those beginnings and how you did yeah. turn to lemon into lemonade and all of that, which you absolutely have. But at what point did you feel pulled or called into ministry? Well, that's an interesting story in and of itself too, right? So <laughs> one of these, I guess you could almost say traumatic experiences in life, um, in a sense, was moving to Gary, Indiana as a, as a young child or, you know, almost, well, pre and, and teen. Um, I turned 13 when I was there, I think. And that's actually when, I guess you could say, I technically first got saved, um, come to know the Lord. But um, I, I always believed in God growing up, right? Um, I would pray, but, you know, the simple stuff that you do as a child. Um, so my, my knowledge was limited. I never really went to church per se. Um, you know, we talk about uh, Victory being an online church nowadays. Well, there was there was TV. The Catholic Church was on back in the day. <laughs> and I remember watching that from time to time because my mom was, was Catholic and I was technically baptized Catholic. But to me, it never meant anything growing up. Right. And <clears throat> You know, I, I got saved, I guess you could say, on the streets of Gary, like I mentioned, but it didn't it didn't stick. It nothing happened until I actually moved here to Minnesota. And um, again, always had God in my heart and and would go to church if I was invited or something. I remember singing on in a choir with an old girlfriend and you know, stuff like that. But when I was 17, um I guess you could say I got saved again in a sense. And <laughs> and I had a friend that just kept inviting me, me to church. Um, and boy, he probably invited me to church, I don't know, six months or more. He just, he just kept inviting me. He was faithful. Wow. And one of these days I just showed up and I'm like, hey, I'm going to church with you guys. And, and from there, um, it changed my life. And um, as, as a youth, I got plugged in um, with my youth, my youth ministry, um, had the best, 
bestest in the whole wide world, <laughs> uh, youth pastor, Steve Munns. But Steve Munns was the greatest youth pastor. He still ministers to this day. Um, he's just an amazing man. And I learned so much and I, and I grew so much in that ministry. Um, and I was called in that ministry, you know, to be a pastor, um, to change the world. <laughs> um, and yeah, it just, it was, it was so amazing. I mean, there's probably a whole bunch more to share. Um, but that, that call of God's always been on my life and, um, uh, it it if you if you commit to God right in your salvation and stuff it changes you from the inside out and there's nothing like it it's a lifelong commitment um, just you know like if you choose anything else to some degree we don't think about it that way but it can really shape the person that you are and you know it's it's a strong belief in God that. You know, I've become the man that I am, that I've, you know, accomplished the things that I have. And again, that I haven't let the past get me down. Yeah, absolutely. So you said that when you moved to Minnesota, you got saved again, kind of. Right. What, is, what does that look like? What was different about your relationship? Because you said at 13, you came to a knowledge of Jesus that, yep. um, you know, you, you committed your life to him. What happened at 17 that made it more impactful or different? Well, it was different because, you know, and this is, this is kind of what I believe to the, the, the mission of our churches now is you can, you can be a, a street evangelist and that's awesome. You know, I've, I've gone out on the streets and I've witnessed to people and that's important. You know, acquiring that salvation is how you get into heaven. But mm -hmm. if you're not plugged into like a local church, if you're not reading your Bible, if you're not praying and, and doing all those things, I mean, you're, you're not utilizing that relationship that you have with God. You know, God made us for fellowship and, and he wants to fellowship with us. And so in order to fellowship with somebody, in order to have a relationship with someone like I do my wife or like I do you or a friend or anyone else, you, you have to have a connection, right? You have to have some one-on-one -on -one dialogue. And, and how do you do that? Well, you, you read the Bible, you pray, right? You get to know more about God. And, and you do that by getting plugged into a church. Um, and yeah, nowadays because of COVID, you know, a lot of things have gone online and, you know, that's, that's kind of where we're focusing on. But again, to, to bring it back to your question, it's, it's like when I was 17, I got plugged into the youth ministry. I started to read my Bible and for like six months, I was a sponge. I just soaked up every single thing I could. I was at the church all the time. The doors were open. You know, I was listening to every single message that I could. You know, I was reading my Bible faithfully. I was praying you know, and, and I was just immersing myself into God. And, and that's what you got to do. Because when I was 13 on the streets of Gary, I got saved. I got my salvation, but it didn't like, there was, there was no fruit otherwise, because mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do, how to get plugged in, where to go, anything like that. So... So you're saying that when you became seven, when you were 17 and you were uh, in this youth group that you said you were plugged into, you really were discipled at that. That's, time. Yeah. And that, I'm sorry, I left that part out. Yeah. That's, that's where I feel like the ministry of the church is. It's not just to get yeah. people saved is to disciple, right? Mm -hmm. So you get them saved first and foremost, 
But what did Jesus do? He made disciples out of men. Yeah. And a, a disciple is, is one who follows the teacher or the teachings of the mm -hmm. teacher, right? So that's, that's what we all are. And that's what we need to do in order to have that relationship with God. And so at 13, you, you said you gave your life where you, you, you asked Jesus in your heart. Yep. But at 17, it sounds like you gave him your life. Like you yep. asked him in your heart. Exactly. But at 17, you were like, okay, now I'm giving you my life. That's right. And I want to be taught your ways. But you were also at a place, literally, physically, in a youth group right. with a phenomenal leader yep. and that was teaching. And you said here that... Um, that that's when you got plugged in. And I was going to ask you to talk about being plugged in. What did that mean? And I think you touched on it when you talked about reading your Bible. Sure. You talked about the different things. But we hear that term a lot, whether it's yeah. getting plugged into your youth group, plugged into this women's group, plugged into this men's group, plugged into this church, plugged in, plugged in, plugged in. What are we, outlets? You know, what does it mean? <laughs> To to the degree. <laughs> well, talk about that, Pastor. Yeah. What does it well, mean to get plugged in? So again, you know, I I started, I, I, I made a choice. I made a commitment that, you know, so I, I got saved again, if you will. I rededicated my life in a sense. Mm -hmm. I always kind of considered that as my real moment of salvation because I did get plugged in. I started going to church. I started reading my Bible. I started praying. And again, for that six month time period, you know, is, is that's kind of how I look at it because I didn't, I didn't get too heavily involved in ministry before that. I soaked everything up like a sponge. I, I tried to learn as much as I could about God. Right. Yeah. And then when I got to that point of really, you know, believing everything and knowing what I know or new, because <laughs> yeah. I, I know a whole lot more now, because um, that's how God does it. He, he, he brings you from glory to glory or faith to faith, however you want to look at things. But um, after that, like six month time period, in a sense, I got plugged into the ministry, which means I became an effective part of a ministry. And so instead of just being a youth in the ministry, I became a youth leader in the ministry, okay. you know, so somebody that, that people would follow. And I've always had that leadership quality, mm -hmm. um, even in, the, in the work that I do outside of church or anything else like that. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I, I started going to those leadership meetings. I started, you know, doing things like, we had a drama group, uh, a worship team. We had a junior business uh, ministry. Um, you know, we had we had so many things, and I was a part of like all of it because again, I'm in all the way, right? And and that's just how I kind of plugged in. Um, you know, you you immerse yourself. And that's getting plugged in. You you do and figure out everything that you can. And, you know, fortunately enough, I guess for me, and it's not to say that this couldn't happen for others, but God's enabled me with a lot of gifts and talents. So the nice thing about that, and, and it applies to all of us, is that God has given us gifts and talents. Yeah. And... We might not necessarily see it that way. We're, we're good at things, right? And those are those gifts. Those are those talents that God's blessed us with. You know, some people are athletes, and that's what God's blessed them with. And, and you use those gifts and talents to the best of your ability. And then as you're utilizing what you do know, mm -hmm. God bestows more upon you, and you grow, and you learn, and you become better at other things. So that's how I got like plugged into all those other ministries and stuff. Okay. All right. So getting plugged in is, you know, you said six months and 
I'm just like, yeah, what a challenge for somebody out there that's listening or viewing today. Maybe you feel like Donato did, like you saw the need for change in your life. So you look to God to do that. But have you ever given him your life? Have you like plugged in somewhere? Why not give God six months and see if you're not completely different in six months? But you have to be in a place where you, when you plug in that there's some power coming back, right? You, yep. There has to be some power coming back, which you were getting at the church you were at. And obviously in the youth group that you were at. Yep. So here we go. You're going through school. You're done with high school. Um, when did you say, I I'm going to be a pastor? How did that happen? <laughs> um, that happened many years later. But again, I was called in the ministry mm -hmm. um, and the youth ministry. I'm sorry. Um, and so, again, being plugged into the youth ministry, I would actually or I got trained up in how to effectively minister by being part of the drama group, by being part of the worship team and all of these things. We would actually go and do camps around the country, <clears throat> youth camps. And um, Steve would would bring all of us. Um, well, I shouldn't say all of us. I mean, probably around 20 of us. Um, and that, that comprised of the worship team and the drama group. Um, some of us were on both. And uh, we, would, we would go out and minister. And so Steve would preach and then we would do the drama. We would do the worship. So it was kind of like an all-in-one type of a deal. And actually, that's how I met my dear, lovely wife, <laughs> Nicole. Um, I met her at a camp. And that's kind of a funny story in and of itself. We were uh, unloading the trailer full of all of our equipment. And I think I was carrying a keyboard at the time or something. And I turned around and I saw this, this beautiful girl. And she was actually surrounded by a whole bunch of other girls. Like there was a lot of people around her. So, but like the heavens parted and the light shined down on her. And it was like, huh. And. <laughs> You know, I, I say that kind of fun and fun, fun, but um, that's that's kind of how it was to me. And it was like out of everyone else that was there, she was the one that stood out. And I felt right there in my heart. I'd never seen her before. And this is this is kind of the, the scary thing about God sometimes, right? When he reveals certain things to you, um, it's like I knew I was going to marry her. Um, now that's a story wow. in and of itself. Cause that didn't happen for many years later, but, um, we, um, hit it off during camp and, um, didn't stay very well connected throughout the years, but if, again, she, she found me on Facebook, she was a stalker <laughs> and, um, and then we, we've been married for 10 lovely years now. So, wow. Uh, so you met at camp. Yep. Where you were there now being part of the active ministry. Yep. And you guys met there. The heavens parted. God said, this is the woman for you. Yep. And she hates that story, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and you knew she was the one. And even though, I mean, check this out, guys. Even though maybe they didn't actually stay connected after the youth that that particular year because God had said it was going to be, yep. you know, however many years later, you guys are back in each other's life again through social media. I mean, God uses social media and you've been married for 10 years. Yep. That, that is a beautiful and powerful story. And somebody out there needed to hear that. Don't give up, right? Don't give up. Because what God has put together cannot be put, no man put asunder. Yep. That is right. Well, so, and that's the thing. She was the one that kind of got away. And, you know, <clears throat> throughout life, you know, all the things that, that happened, you know, every once in a while I would look back at our time together. Sure. Um, you know, because she was, she was that great love. And... Mm -hmm. 
um, I would always think about her and always wonder how she was doing and, mm. and things like that. And then, yeah, she, she tracked me down and we, uh, we hit it off again. And now she can't get rid of me though. She probably wants to sometimes. <laughs> that is such a beautiful love story. And so, okay. So you guys reconnect, then what happens? You get married, but what happens then? Well, how do you end up in Minnesota? Well, I've I've been in Minnesota since I was 15. Okay. Um, so then I drug her here. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, kicking and screaming. <laughs> but um, yeah, so then, so that's the, that's the thing, actually, if we want to bring it up to more current day, how I got plugged back into the ministry. So for, for a time in my life, um, I was out of the ministry and, you know, I was not exactly serving God. I still believed, I still um, lived the life, but I wasn't, you know, plugged into a ministry, right? I would, and, and I guess that's not completely true. I, I would serve somewhat. Um, I, I went to my uncle's church for a while and I would cook. Um, so like every Wednesday we would cook for people um, and that kind of thing. So I did serve a little bit, but it wasn't, it wasn't to that ministry capacity necessarily. Right. Right. And, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. And, and that's, that's one of the things I'd definitely point out here um, is that again, God's given all of us gifts and talents and it's all about how we use them. Um, if it's cooking, in my case, you know, that I just mentioned, that's awesome because everyone needs to eat, you know, right. <laughs> and, you know, so do the thing that God has given you the ability to do and, and he will bless you, you know, for putting forth your part, your effort. But when Nicole and I got married here and I, I moved her and the kids here to Minnesota um, it was important. Like her and the kids. How many kids? Three. Three kids. Did yeah. you have any children before then? N no, I don't have any biological children. I was married once before, and so I have some other stepchildren. But okay. Yeah. So, but you, so you came up, so you, you came up here, and at this or at this point in your life, um, you didn't have any children living with you, so you didn't have any of that nucleus, but you get married and there's three children. So you're like instant dad. All yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah. And technically one of them, um, our oldest didn't live with us initially because he had just graduated high school and he actually moved to Pennsylvania with the grandparents for a little bit. Okay. But then he came and then they came. <laughs> so, the grandparents came. Okay. Yep. Yep, my in-laws came here and lived with us for, for a while. Um, we only just recently uh, put my mother-in-law in an in a assisted living facility because she needed a little bit more care. So Okay. Okay, so Donato, I'm going to just, Pastor, I want to just pause here for a moment because at the beginning you said that you had siblings that you were separated from, right? Yep. And that your parents had split at a young age. And so you didn't have that family unit, right? Right. And, and it doesn't sound like you, you also had shared that with me that you've been married before and that th there was obviously that didn't work. So you were still like lacking that family unit. You didn't have it as a child. It was taken from you. And as an adult, you, you invested into it and it didn't work. But this woman who the, the sun stood still over, so to say, <laughs> comes back into your life. And a lot of people would laugh and be like, oh my gosh, you poor thing. You married into all that baggage, right? Kids, parents, but I'm like, I'm going, wait a minute, hold on, hold the phone here for a second. She came with everything that you had had taken from you. 
she came with as a family unit to you. You know, you they might not have been your siblings, but you had siblings growing up in the house together. And those children to nurture that you you didn't have that you didn't get to be a nurturing sibling the way that you could have been and uh parents that came along that stayed together for you know a long 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 time again not anything that you had seen or experienced so really when god says that's the person for you he knows all that that entails and and he knew that for Nicole, that the man that would come into her life to be that permanent fixture, that husband, was going to be someone that was going to love and accept her children and her parents. Now, I can say from just my standpoint looking in, uh, you, uh, you and Sandy, Nicole's mom, you call mom. You are very, very close with all, I mean, the kids, the family, everybody. But you definitely hopped on board. It wasn't like, well, I don't know. I got to draw the line at that third kid or draw the line at that dad, at mom, whatever. Like you just received it from going back to my memories of it. It's like, yeah. yeah, this is my family. This is my family. This isn't her family. This is my family. D did it feel like that to you? Because that's sure the way it, it, it looks. Yeah. Well, you know, even though I have had that lack of family <laughs> growing up, um, family still was always important to me. And, you know, has it been perfect every step of the way? No, of course not. No family is right. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, when we moved here to Minnesota, we moved her to take care of my grandmother um she lived to be 100 <laughs> you know so you know having that <clears throat> you know you're supposed to take care of your family uh, mentality um you know even though i consider myself american i'm also italian and you know we we have a little bit sense of family right and and that's what you're supposed to do so yeah for for me it was it was easy enough to, you know, accept them all, but, you know, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, but yeah, I mean, they're fantastic people. I mean, you can't, you couldn't ask for better in-laws. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I call her mom because, yeah, she's been more of a mother to me than, than my own was, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, and the nice thing about it is, too, you know, I can look her, I can look to her not only as like, you know, a natural mom, but a spiritual one as well. And we all need that in our lives as well. You know, we all need somebody to come along and mentor us, to disciple us. You know, we're, we're never finished growing. Um, <clears throat> you know, a, another person in my life that was, you know, maybe not in it for a long time, but was uh pastor bruce and you know i look to him a little bit like a father um or a father figure anyway and in a spiritual one at that because you know he was such an example as to the type of christian we need to be just because he was praying all the time i mean he took that passage where it says pray without ceasing literally he was always <laughs> praying and you know he was just such an example because you know he he he, he complimented even what i said in the beginning about you know not letting life get you down i mean he was technically disabled but we would have men's breakfast and he would climb two flights of stairs basically on his hands and knees to get up to the upper room where we met. Wow. I mean, nothing, nothing slowed the guy down or inhibited him in any way. He was bound and determined. And most people would have been like, well, they meet on the second floor. There's just no way I can get up there. I'm just not going to go. No, he didn't have that attitude. He was like, I'm going to be there 
to to hear you know what pastor says or to you know give his supply and 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 that's that's what he did you know he he yeah. often came with the supply and that's what we're all supposed to do it, it doesn't matter because i'm the pastor or anything else like that we're all christians right yeah if, if we're if we believe in god and, and got saved <clears throat> you know and and that's 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 a key crucial thing too you can be a good person but if you don't have the salvation you don't get into heaven and it's a, it's a yeah. sorry sorry sad truth you know and it's and it's not necessarily fair because <laughs> you can be the best little grandma in the whole world <clears throat> even going to church but if you don't have that salvation you don't have that relationship with christ it, it means nothing where you can be an axe murderer on death row and sincerely get saved at the last minute, accept Christ into your heart, and you get to go to heaven. You know, well, it's, it's, it's a crazy. hard thing, isn't it? It's a heart <laughs> condition, not yeah. a works condition, right? It's a heart right. condition. What well, in what I'm hearing is that God really redeemed your time, not just redeemed um, the incidences. He redeemed the time and brought you in. Uh, father figures, mother figures, um, the joy of, of seeing siblings growing up together, well, raising I, those children, yourself. I mean, that's just beautiful. I, I also didn't mention growing up, <clears throat> that friend I mentioned that kept inviting me to church. Yeah. I actually became part of that family. And, and I call it my black family because they're black. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and I don't mean to be culturally insensitive or anything else like that. Okay. You know, I grew up in that era and different things and they don't mean be, mind being called black, but I have a black family. And, you know, again, that's, that's a unique part of my background, you know, and, and different things. And so I did, I grew up with some brothers in a sense and a mother and father there as well. You know, okay. so as you just mentioned, you know, God restoring certain things, Absolutely. Um, you know, there's there's definitely been influences throughout my life that have helped me along the way. Absolutely. And you mentioned that with Pastor Bruce, but you also mentioned that Sandy, Nicole's mom, Pastor Sandy, by the way, yes. was very instrumental, as Bruce was, but in discipling you in ministry as an adult, in stepping into that pastoral call. And I just wanted to to bring that full circle and say, you know, who God calls, he equips, right? And he doesn't, uh, he, he doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called, right? That's right. And so here he just continued to disciple you. So a reason the discipleship, which is merely a Christian word for training, everybody, yeah. and education, that's what it means. Your heart for discipleship or training and education comes from being a product of it. We like to say we're a product of the product, right? So you are a product of that product of, of being discipled, trained, poured into, educated. So let's just take a little pause because I want to make, make sure we get time in to talk about business because you're also a brilliant businessman. And then we'll circle back to... Um, to the church so we can we can end on that note but let's take like five minutes here or whatever and just talk about dnp um you can talk about that talk about the website just share a little bit of that because uh, i want people to know that they could call you to preach to them on sunday but they also could contact you uh, for some business things that a person might need because everybody right now needs a website it seems so anyways yeah. share a little bit about that well, so, you know, I, I, I've always had to make a living, right? I wasn't always in the ministry. And, and actually, if you're in the ministry, many of you know, it's, it's a calling, like Pamela just mentioned, um, you're not in it for the money necessarily. Right. <laughs> um, you know, so Paul still made tents, right? That's and, right. Um, my, my, my tent is in IT, you know, I work with computers and have for, ooh, way too long. <laughs> Not sure I want to mention how long, but um, yeah, so I have a, you know, a very vast background in information technology, um, 
I've I've worked on global enterprise product pro, projects, sorry, that have you know migrated tens of thousands of computers and servers around the world with thousands of applications. Um, there isn't much in IT that I haven't done, but currently, um, outside of any other consulting work like that, <clears throat> uh, Nicole and I um, have DNP Designs, where we run and maintain uh, different websites for people, um, including yours. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's 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 a blessing, you know, um, to, to be able to do it with Nicole as well. And, you know, so she has certain gifts and talents that I don't have. Right. Um, I'm good on the technology side of things. She's good at the designing aspect of things mm -hmm. and, and making everything look pretty. I'm, I'm not too artsy fartsy. She is. <laughs> so God uses our, our different talents and gifts and abilities. And, um, so we formed DNP. I always had a business of my own that I used for consulting, but now that we're doing it together, DNP is just basically Donato and Nicole Parisi. <laughs> oh. and, you know, we design um, website related things, but much other stuff too. I mean, Nicole has her hands in a few different things and I even have my hands in other things as well. So. Um, well, and you guys, uh, take care of my whole podcast and the Pamela yep. show from the recording to the editing, uh, making it look pretty intros, outros, um, gosh, blogs. Yep. Uh, social media, social the whole media, nine yards. Backstage stuff. And when I say backstage stuff, I mean like right now, right now you can't see her, but Nicole is backstage making right. sure that everything is working well while while Pastor Donato and I are recording. So it's pretty cool. So I wanted to make sure I highlighted that so that if you're, you know, if you're in need of any of that stuff, hey, reach out to the to Pastor Donato and all of that will be in the description as well. But I wanted to make sure that we that we um, highlighted that and at the end um Pastor Donato has a special DNP offer for you, but we'll get there in a few minutes. Let's let's circle back to uh, to the ministry. And I do want to say that, yes, it needs to be a labor of love, right? Because um, you're not doing it for the money, right? Uh, because if you were doing it for the money, at least in the beginning, you probably would have be doing something else. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't want you abundantly blessed. So uh, as you are working and laboring in a ministry, if you're out there doing that, and you're wondering where, you know, don't, don't uh, call it up, you know, chopped liver because there isn't anything there. Like Donato said, Paul made tents, right? And so, but God anointed his hands and blessed him. And Paul was actually a very financially wealthy person. Um, and because of that, he could serve in the gospel. So I just wanted to put that plug in there. However, God chooses to bring that money to you. Let him do that as you are out there serving him and doing good in the world. So Pastor Donato, pastor, how did you become pastor in the time we have left? Can you just share that story with us? How did you go from meeting finally the woman of your dreams, marrying her? You're in Minnesota. You're serving cooking at your uncle's church, for goodness sakes. What happened? Right. So when we got married um, and, and brought everyone here, um, you know, it was important for me because of the kids to get plugged into a good ministry. Right. So, again, I had that growing up with Steve and I knew that, you know, that's important because I was already at a point in my life where I know who I am in Christ and and. I knew I was going to heaven. I, I absorbed a whole lot of stuff, you know, not that I arrived by any means, but I, I was confident in who I was, but it was important for me that the kids get some kind of teaching and upbringing. <clears throat> so we hunted around for a while um, to find a, a good church that was, you know, more local to where we were living. And, um, it took us a little bit, but we found victory. 
And then we got plugged into the ministry there. Um, the, the funny thing about that was we, we came for know, a couple months or so um, and then made a commitment to, you know, yep, this is the place. And I, I was talking to the senior pastor at that time, your husband. <laughs> um, and I mentioned my background with Steve Munns as my youth minister, and he knew him well. And he was like, hey, maybe you should be our next youth pastor. And I was like, no. <laughs> I literally did that. I like stepped back. I was like, no. Um, yes. <laughs> and and um, I, you know, because I wasn't looking for that. I was, I was, what I was doing was trying to ask him more about the ministry, you know, because our, our daughter was, was that age. And, um, you know, I think I had already talked to the, the children's pastor and, and I was fine with, with our son, with where he was at. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure like the, the, the youth were, were getting, you know, fed. And, um, but yeah, anyway, <clears throat> God dealt with me, <laughs> reminded me that I was called. Um, yeah. And then um, I, you know, we're, we're really kind of not supposed to do this, but once in a while you can get away with it where you put God to the test. And um, I did. I, I was like, all right, Lord, here's the thing. If you want me to have this job um, and whatnot, because it was it was requiring me to be gone a lot, you're, you're going to, you know, bless me financially or whatever, and you're going to give me this job here. Uh, I won't be able to do ministry. And then, you know, I was like, but, you know, hey, if you want me to be minister, you know, be a minister or whatever, and you'll give me this job over here or something, and then I'll be home, and then I can minister, and hey, guess what happened? <laughs> so anyway, I got plugged in and um, did a whole bunch of Bible school. Um, I guess technically I would have the equivalent of a master's, maybe a doctorate, I don't know. I've done sure. several years of, uh, of Bible school. Um, and also teaching it. So, yeah, um, got plugged in in the ministry, you know, became youth pastor, kind of associate pastor, and a senior pastor. So it's um, it's very interesting that, you know, God keeps pulling you up, whether you want it or not. <laughs> Absolutely. And I remember as the Lord was kind of getting me focused into the winding down mode a number of years ago, and and I said at a staff meeting, uh, you know, there's life for me after victory celebration. I don't know exactly what that means, but just putting it out there that that means I won't always be here. And you were the one out of all the other staff that were in the room. And there was a number of them that reached out to me privately later and said, I believe that's me that will, you know, take that you know, that you'll pass the baton too. And then you were willing to go into training and, and that's a training of the spirit. And it's, you know, uh, because being a pastor is a spiritual job, but especially now after you've been there for a while as senior pastor and been a pastor for years, whether it's youth path, pastor, associate, whatever, you know, that much of being a pastor is preaching, isn't it? And the rest of it is caring for the people, loving the people and helping the people, discipling the people, being at the hospitals, the weddings, the funerals, whatever it is, it's being there. And you were ready to, to go through all of that and learn all of that. It wasn't just like, okay, Donato, we pray for you. And here you have the pulpit. There was so much more to that. And, and you were willing and willing and able because you were called but you were willing to jump in there and you've done a fantastic job. So tell us, so COVID came, you said we were in, uh, that you had taken the ministry from here and now it was online ministry. What is that like? And what's going on in the ministry right now? Is there anything you want to highlight? Talk to us about being an online church because that's where things are at is, be, is online. It's, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, up to 60% of people that went to church 
prior to COVID have not gone back to a physical building, but they are plugging in, as you put it, online. Now, I don't think there's anything greater than actually collectively in the flesh being together, but there are people that are saying, hey, for whatever reason, or maybe there isn't a good church uh, they consider to be a good quality church near them, or they live out nowhere, or they're in the middle of Africa, or who knows what, with technology as it is, you could be living in Africa and call Victory Celebration your home church, right? Yep. So right. talk to us about that. Well, so, you know, fortunately, God had a plan. Um <clears throat> that um you know even prior to covid we started recording yes and um then covid hit you know um and i don't know one could argue it's here it's not here whatever right. case in point is yeah we're we're mostly online now we do get together uh currently once a month <clears throat> um in person because it is still important to fellowship with like-minded believers right but to get fed um is is the main part of your discipleship so like you mentioned you can be in africa and still watch us and that's yeah. that's so important and you know i want to make mention too you know just because i am a pastor doesn't mean that i don't have to also get fed i have to do my due diligence and and read the bible and pray seek god and listen because you hear by hearing the word Mm -hmm. Um, so I listen to other preachers as well. And, you know, the thing that I would encourage people out there is, yeah, certainly you could check me out on, on YouTube and Facebook and, and I hope you do. Um, I would hope that you would get plugged into our ministry because, you know, my goal is definitely discipleship. <clears throat> so that I think reflects in my teaching, but, you know, you, you, you need to get fed, and like I mentioned, I get fed. I listen to some really strong preachers out there. And, and that's the thing. You just need to seek after God to get fed. And it can be anyone, anywhere. That's the beauty of our internet now, right? With right. Facebook, with YouTube, with many other platforms. Um, that you can hear the word. Because that's how you learn more about God. You hear or you you learn, you know, by hearing and and things like that, by reading your Bible. But mm -hmm. sometimes the word has to be preached and you have to hear it yeah. in order for you to see receive some kind of revelation from God that you wouldn't have necessarily on your own. And then sometimes those things that you've read in the Bible now click into place. And and that's what's so important. You know, you need to you need to be following someone that's preaching the whole word and the truth, yes. right? Not not some religiosity that decides um, to take, right. you know, whatever parts of the Bible that they like and leave out other parts that they don't like. You know, the word of God is truth. It's infallible. And, and there's going to be parts maybe you don't like, and, but there's going to be truth in it all. Absolutely. And I love what you said, how you can be in Africa and get plugged in. And I and I, I also want to just share that, you know, Pastor Donato is my pastor now. I, he also um, is mentored and coached. And yep. so that's a big deal is that you never are an island unto yourself. Even when God places you at the helm of something, whether it's a church or something else, you always need to have people that have call me on the carpet status in your life. And those that will absolutely can pour into you and can be your cheerleader and will teach you and continue to educate you. And Pastor Donato does that. Is there anything that you want to like, oh, yeah, I want to make sure I plug this. I want to talk about that, um, whether it's church, um, whether it's a business. Is there anything on your mind that you're like, yep, i got to make sure I talk about this? In the time remaining, let's do that. Sure. So I guess we'll try to wrap that up. You know, anybody that is uh, seeking some website or design, graphic design or other computer related or social media type things, um, you know, mention purpose with Pamela here and um, or purpose by design. Um, and um, <clears throat> we'll get you a special discount. 
um, if you mention the show here. And then um, with our church coming up, we are actually going to be broadcasting our Seder meal. We're going to be doing a little bit earlier than uh, the normal. But we're going to have a Seder meal where we'll be broadcasting that live on uh, Facebook. What's a Seder YouTube. meal? What's a Seder meal? What's a Seder meal? <laughs> uh, generally, it's a it's a, <clears throat> a celebrate over Passover. It's it's the remembrance of um, the children of Israel leaving Egypt and coming into the Promised Land. So that's kind of a long and short of it, but. It also ties into Jesus' life, death, and resurrection um, on the cross. Um, so yeah, you'd have to you'd have to watch it to, to learn more about it. Yeah, we're gonna step through the whole um, meal. There's there's a lot of teaching involved with it. Um, it's really a good time of of fellowship, but it's teaching as well. It's good discipleship. And, and though we're technically not Jewish, um, we follow Jesus, right? We follow the teachings of the teacher and, yeah. um, it's important to be properly discipled and to learn all things. Um, so there's that. Oh, it's so good. And one more thing I wanted to make sure that you did highlight was the victory panel because people can tune in from all over the world to your victory panel. So touch on that and then we'll call it a wrap. So one of the other things, um, and you you also helped me with the victory panel. I mean, it's it's almost more your baby, I would say. Because <laughs> cause God has, you know, another mentor of, of both of ours um, was Joe and, and he was gifted by the Holy Spirit to have this victory panel or a panel, a Holy Spirit forum and, and God's called us here to Victory Celebration to have the Victory Panel and, and to teach things about the Holy Spirit. And, you know, that's, again, part of discipleship. we got to learn. we got to grow. we got to understand the things of God. Yeah. And, and so that's what we do on the Victory Panel. You can still watch us on Facebook and YouTube uh, under Victory Celebration Family Church for that. And um, that will be broadcasted once a month in the middle of all of our other services that we have. And it's just a fantastic time um, for growth and opportunity. So, you know, we'll have other speakers on there from time to time. And we just talk about the move of the Holy Spirit and, and getting to know God more, understand yeah. him. You mm -hmm. know, the, the current series I'm doing is the evidence. And, and it's kind of like that. The, the panel is, is like, explaining the evidence of God to us and showing us how God moves and and the things that we can get um, from God if we're just watching. Yes. Oh, it's so good. It's so rich, Pastor Donato. Well, everything that Pastor Donato has spoken about, above, about, there we go, where you can plug in. He's talked about Facebook. He's talked about websites. He's talked about YouTube. All that information is in the description. He shared about their online church services, the online church, not just church services, an online church where you can plug in. And I think you can tell his heart is beautiful. So if you're looking for a place to plug in, I do really encourage you to give a sampling under the pastorship of Pastor Donato Parisi. It's also shared with you up and coming, a Passover or Seder meal that'll be broadcast and the victory panel. There's a lot of stuff going on. Lots of ways for you to get involved. Pastor Donato, thank you so much. And thank you for the generous offer to people who say, hey, I'm looking for help setting up my podcast, or I need a website, or I need some help with my social media. Uh, make sure that you reach out and that you mention Purpose by Design or Purpose with Pamela. I'm sure however you word it, they'll honor it and give you a nice discount for, for stopping by. I want to thank you so much for stopping by, Pastor Donato. This has been a treasure. And we have to have you come back again and share the growth of being not just a pastor of a in-person congregation, but as you're walking that line and figuring out how to pastor an online church, 
and an in-person church and how that flows together. I think that would be wonderful. Would you come back again in like a few months and update us? Absolutely. Oh, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for being here today, Dee. Yep. It was a pleasure being here and, um, you know, I'll uh, have even more information because I'm going to be releasing some books as well. Oh, all right. Yes. Well, we are excited. Well, we'll, you have to come back and you have to talk about all that stuff. We have to get you on right now and have you come back here as well. (laughs) Thank you so much, Pastor Donato. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you. And thank you to all of you who have shown up today. I know that you were taking notes because you know what? I've been taking a lot of notes here. There was a lot of gold nuggets that were dropped, and I hope that you captured them. And I hope that you'll consider uh, following up with Pastor Donato and seeing all that he has to offer on the ministry side, but on the business side, too. Do us a favor. Do what Les Brown, my mentor, says. Like it and share it. Like it and share it. All you need to do is hit that little subscribe button, that like button, that share button, depending upon where in the world you are and where you're watching this. And let's help take messages of hope like this, like Donato's message around the world. Let's tell the world these messages are needed. And you can do that by liking and sharing it. And also, you might know somebody whose life would be changed just because you sent it to them in an email. You can share it with them on social media. You can send it to them in an email. I encourage you today to do that. Remember, you are here on purpose, with a purpose by design, not by default. So go on out there and be the salt and the light everywhere you go. See you next time. Bye. Pamela Hankel is the founder of The Purpose Center. Pamela is a mindset mentor, author, speaker, minister, and transformation coach. Her weekly podcast, international radio show, and television show are a lifeline that changes lives and inspires people to discover their individual potential through realizing their purpose by design. Pamela is a natural motivator and has shown many how to find their niche and transform their lives. Although success is an uphill battle, Pamela gives the necessary strategies to flourish, cheering you on every step of the way. Pamela shares from her personal experiences, education, and life as a woman in leadership, utilizing decades of knowledge. Taking the approach of, let's have coffee and chat, she will awaken your dreams and purpose by design. Are you ready for Pamela to help guide you? Email us at purposewpamela.office at gmail.com or go to her website at purposewithpamela.com.